Let's be clear. The false narrative that links grooming with LGBTQ plus individuals is nothing but a despicable lie born out of hatred and ignorance. The truth is that most child sexual abusers are heterosexual. Sexual orientation has nothing to do with it. What's at play is a sick and twisted desire for power, not love. Yes, kids are being groomed, prepped, taught, indoctrinated, predisposed, but what they are being groomed for is hate and conditional love and bigotry. We are being played with this false narrative, and enough is enough. Would it be okay if I were to tell you that I am afraid? Someday, so I call you up and you call me down. Would it be okay? Well, hello and welcome to the Freed Hearts Podcast. Thanks for joining us. We're glad you're here. My name is Robert Cottrell, and I'm here as always with Susan the amazing, <laughs> wonderful, beautiful, incredible Susan Cottrell. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Thought I'd throw that in there. See if you're paying attention. <laughs> Again, always. connect with us, freedhearts.org. That's where everything is. Um, hey, you know what? <laughs> this we've had some last couple of weeks or, or so we had some kind of fun and we did some light stuff. This one, this one's gonna be serious. And it, I I I have to I'm gonna have to watch myself on this one because I tend to get upset about this stuff and frustrated, and I know many of you are as well. And deservedly there, so. yeah, there are so many horrible laws out there, so much division and bullshit in the ramping up of this, you know, political season that's going to get just beyond bad in the next year and a half, year. And so much of it is stoking fear. It's all about fear. Yeah. And a big part of that for issues surrounding LGBTQ+, and in particular the transgender community, is this false crap narrative that kids are being groomed. It's lies and it's infuriating. So we want to talk about that today. Yeah, grooming. And for decades, the word grooming has been associated with sexual abuse, Mm -hmm. a child sexual abuse in particular. It was defined as a set of behaviors and manipulations that adults use to make it easier to introduce and complete sexual interactions with the child without having to use physical force. What it does not refer to is all the crap you're hearing uh, in the debate about legislation and drag queen story times and many other social media people who are encouraging kids to be inclusive and loving. This narrative is rooted in past anti-gay movements. The weaponization of the term grooming is tied to a history of longstanding false claims that gay, lesbian, and bisexual people, and men in particular, molest children at a higher rates than people who are not LGBTQ. Lies. Lies. They're lies. But we want to go even deeper in this false idea of grooming kids for sexual abuse and talk about how children are being groomed, what they're being groomed for. We could call it prepping, taught, indoctrinating, predisposing, but let's just call it grooming since that's the word of the day. First, again, bullshit. This whole idea that our kids are being groomed for sexual abuse by education policies, books, drag queen story times is total crap. I can't use that word enough on this today. Experts in psychology and child development said there is no evidence, no evidence whatsoever showing that increased exposure to LGBTQ plus people or topics make children more likely to join the LGBTQ plus community. It doesn't work that way. It just doesn't work that way. Now, what it might make them more of is more understanding and inclusive and bingo. That's the problem that the people who are anti-gay have with this. There is grooming going on, beloved, but it's not what you've been told. Yeah. Kids are being groomed every day. Groomed to be consumers, we all are, to be insecure, to be exclusive, and to be misogynist, transphobic, homophobic, racist. I mean, let's 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 look at those. Those selling us, those selling things 
want us to be consumers. Those in power want us to be insecure. So we need them. Those running a business built on exclusivity want us to be exclusive. White, straight, um, patriarchal males want us to be racist, queerphobic, and misogynistic. Send us back into the closet if you're LGBTQ+, and back into the closet if you care about your neighbor, back into the closet if you're an abused woman who wants to say, hey, me too. Yeah. Buy the product because you're not worthy. Build the wall, lock the doors, and for God's sake, pun intended, be quiet. You see that? All the ways that, that we and yeah. kids are being groomed? Yes. Je- so Jennifer McGuire, McGuire, a professor of family social science at the University of Minnesota, mm. said that perspective stems from an underlying desire to separate people who are different and to characterize them as less than or evil. So it's a new form of homophobia and transphobia, or maybe it's the same old form, but with new language. (laughs) Yeah. And to the contrary, studies of child sexual abuse have revealed that most child molesters identify as heterosexual, Mm -hmm. according to the Zero Abuse Project. Abuse is about power, not sexual orientation or desire. Say that again. Abuse is about power, not sexual orientation or desire. Yep. People are being played. Yep. We're being lied to and manipulated to increase power, wealth, and empires. Not ours, theirs. It's time to wake up. Time to be woke. You know, I, uh, I know, I know. I mean, this is this right from the news just a few months ago. Nazis show up. I'm not talking about decades. I'm talking about like a few weeks ago. Nazis show up armed in uniform with swastika flags and symbols to protest a drag queen story time. And the group were concerned about having a bad influence on kids are the drag queens. I know. It's horrifying. Are you kidding me? I mean, it used to be the worst thing that you could call someone was a Nazi. And if that was a label on you, it would completely discredit you. What the hell has happened here? Sorry. Exactly. Don't be sorry. Don't apologize for being moved. I mean, what do you feel like? Yeah. If you're the drag queen in that situation. Yeah. And you're there. Yeah, like uh, hell. It, to, it, it, to read, you know, to be kind yeah. to children, to convey a message of love and inclusion. And Nazis, armed Nazis in uniform show up. And the people were mad at, not we, but the people perceived as the bad people in this are the drag queens. It's, it's insane. Mm. It's insane. Well, misusing the the term grooming can prevent the identification of actual grooming behavior. That's the the terrible risk here and allow abuse to go undetected. Yeah, we, we talked about this yesterday that, you know, it, this is all done to protect the children because we care they about say. the children right. is what they say. Right. But their efforts here can actually result in real grooming behavior going undetected. Which well, that's exactly what it is. Hurt. It's a red herring. It's a distraction. Like a magic act, you you sidetrack the attention so you can get away with what you get away with. And what's her name that, sorry, Beth Moore, mm. in finally, finally, finally left the Southern Baptist Convention, church, or whatever, because they would not take the sexual abuse seriously that she was pointing out to them. They were deaf to the, the pleas about sexual abuse of women. They didn't care. And she finally left this tradition that meant everything to her that she had identified with lifelong. It takes a lot to get Beth Moore out of the Southern Baptist Church, but that's exactly what that was doing. And what's more, misappropriating the term as a means to keep LGBTQ topics out of the classroom can be harmful to all children, regardless of their own sexuality Mm. or gender identity, experts say. Even for kids who are not LGBTQ identified themselves, they may very well have people in their lives, they probably do, 
who are LGBTQ identified yep. and having that exposure can make them feel safer around their own family. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. Common sense. Common sense. Common and, sense. Yeah. And evidence shows that for LGBTQ youth, a positive, inclusive school environment is beneficial and can mitigate the negative impact of less accepting environments at home or elsewhere. Yeah. Studies show that compared with youth with no or few staff members whom they believed were supportive of LGBTQ students, those students with more supportive staff, I think the number was 11, but supportive staff at their school had higher GPAs and were far less likely to miss school because they felt unsafe or uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, common sense. You know, with bullying such a problem in schools, why would we deny this thing that could help so much? Similarly, a 2021 national survey of nearly 35,000 LGBTQ youth ages 13 to 24 showed the impact a supportive community has on youth mental health. Mm. 42% of those who were surveyed said they had seriously considered attempting suicide in the last year, mm. including more than half of transgender and non-binary youth. But youth who said they had, quote, access to spaces that affirm their sexual orientation and gender identity, close quote, reported lower rates of attempted suicide. And rates were cut in half for those non-binary and transgender youth who said their pronouns were respected by all the people they lived with compared to those who reported their pronouns were not. Wow, that's just, I mean, that, you know, one of the things that we... It's so simple yeah. to support, just use their pronouns to start with. And, and any resistance has nothing to do with these children. Resistance has to do with power and control mm -hmm. and money and politics, mm -hmm. nothing to do with these kids. And still, even without acceptance or inclusion, LGBTQ people have existed across enormous barriers throughout history. Yep. LGBTQ plus people have tolerated massive abuse in this society and in others and continue to exist in the face of that massive abuse. A more accepting environment doesn't make you more likely to be LGBTQ. It just makes you less likely to get abused. <sighs> the, yeah. Yeah. So this this whole this whole idea that books, you know, that that certain Dr. Seuss books or or whatever and drag queen story times are grooming kids to become LGBTQ is just and I'll say it one more time, bullshit. It is just false. It's completely it's absolute false, false crap. Intentional lies. Meant to further an, an agenda that increases the power and wealth and influence of people and systems that are hateful and transphobic and homophobic. And yeah. enough is enough. Beloved, don't get sucked into this cesspool of endless debate and misinformation. Remember, don't debate with people who are committed to misunderstanding you. It can be toxic for you. It's time for all of us, all of us to wake up and realize that misusing the term grooming in the context of LGBTQ plus topics is just, it's not accurate and it's downright deadly and dangerous. And it prevents us from recognizing the true signs of grooming behavior that really put children at risk. Yeah. So let's lead with love here in this, and let's create a positive and inclusive environment in the homes, in the schools, in the community that benefit our LGBTQ plus youth and adults and protect them from harm. Yes. If there's legislation in your area here and you can find uh, out about all of that through organizations like HRC and the Trevor Project and, and Freed Hearts as well on our resources page, speak out, stand up, speak out against this legislation, these, these awful you know, school board uh, proposals and things like that. Speak out against LGBTQ plus marginalization and oppression of any kind, any kind. 
Our children, your children, you deserve to be celebrated, Mm -hmm. not tolerated. Stand up. Not abused. Not abused. Stand up to those who would harm our kids with this hateful rhetoric. And let's do it with love and with courage. You know what? Because these kids, the safety and well being of our kids is worth fighting for. The safety and well being of you is worth fighting for. Yes. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. And we thank you for your courage and your strength and your love as you navigate these spaces. Yes. We love you. You are beloved. Bye. Would it be okay if I were to tell you that I am afraid someday? So I call you up and you call me down. Would it be okay? You've been listening to the Freed Hearts Podcast. We have extensive resources and vibrant community for you at www.freedhearts.org. Just come say hello. And if you have questions or issues or comments about the podcast, things you'd like us to talk about, reach out to us at podcast at freedhearts.org. The music is provided by Hannah Cottrell, our daughter, the Grammy-nominated Saint Sinner. And you can find out more about her at Hey Saint Sinner. Dot com. Please share this, subscribe, and follow on your favorite platform. And thanks for listening.